And um, I just wanted to mention, Brian Murkowski is joining us as well. Um, I've received notification from both Brian as well as others that they're having trouble getting into the Zoom meeting. So uh, perhaps, uh, uh, Juanetta, your thoughts of people viewing it later are, are spot on. Um, I am so thrilled, uh, Reinhold and Richard, that you're here to present. You know, you look at high altitude wind resources, and I think they're going to offer a significant new energy source in this all-in approach to new technologies to solve the critical issue of energy sustainability and um, kind of the focus, the highlight on uh, renewable. So with that, I'm not gonna go much into your backgrounds. I trust that the both of you could give a little recap, but we wanna get right into the meat of the presentation so that we could be engaged with some policy questions for you. Again, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, thank you, Mary, please. Thanks a lot. Um, should I just go ahead and share my screen? Yes, okay? go ahead. Maybe I help you, Richard, with a with a quick, really quick introduction, because I know you. <laughs> to, to, we, we are both engineers, so people, we are not entertainers at all. And <laughs> Richard asked me to tell this upfront. We know our business, but we are really nervous and uh, at the start. So the idea is we make it quick. I'm an, an Austrian-born engineer and economist living in Switzerland for many years. This is where, where I met really many years ago, Brad Richard. And together we, we, we have a company called Sky SSP Operations. It's a partner company of Sky Sales, the inventor of the technology, which we will introduce to you. And I think Richard, just go into it. Okay, well, thanks for that, Reinhard. Like I say, we're, we're two techies. We're, we're not uh, IT savvy at all, I'm afraid. But um, to introduce you, basically, the Future of Sustainable Energy for Alaska, title of the presentation. And, whoops, here I go, my first problem. Okay, so essentially what we're talking about is the world is, is accustomed to a very, very cheap power source, you know, given by the fossil fuels, coal, oil, gas, whatever it might be. It's very convenient, switched on, you can plug your kettle in at three o'clock in the morning, or put your gas cooker on at whatever time, it's always been there. The thing now with the political demands and, and the changes in, in the, the way we produce power, we're changing to renewable. Unfortunately, renewable is not an on-off switch. It depends a lot on the sun, when the sun is out, or are you working in the, in the evening? The wind is not always there, especially at ground levels. It's very unreliable. So we already see now as a company, SSP, there is a massive uh, case for how do we get to these targets, these CO2 emission targets, and how do we start reusing renewable energy to cover not only a few percentage, but a big percentage of our power production. This is what it's all about. And if you take anything from this presentation, it's the next couple of slides. We're harvesting a yet untapped energy source. You may have felt it when you've been traveling west to east or east to west because you're there a little bit quicker or you're there a little bit longer because these high altitude winds are extremely strong, up to two or three times as the, the strength that you see at sort of ground levels where turbines are working. So it's an endless pool of energy, a vast endless pool of energy. And it's to date been untapped for power use. Here, just a, a quick uh, snapshot of Alaska. If you look on the, on the left-hand side, the 10 meter altitude versus 200 meters, which is where our technology is aimed at, uh, a big, big difference in the strength of the wind. So how does it all work? Well, Professor or Dr. Hellman uh, produces power law, which said, every time you double the wind speed, you get a factor of eight in the power. Treble it and you get 27. It's always a cube of the, of the wind speed. So two to the power of three gives you eight, three to the power of three gives you 27. So this is massive improvements. What I'm gonna do is show you straight into a video because this um, picture says a thousand words and I think this two or three minutes will show you better. It is a simple fact. 
Due to the lack of friction with the Earth's surface, the wind blows harder and more steady at higher altitudes. As a result, there is usually almost twice as much wind energy available at 800 meters compared to 100 meters. A key technology used to generate energy from high altitude wind is large and fully automatic towing kites. SkySails Power is developing wind energy systems based on the well-known SkySails technology. For the first time, the enormous energy potential of high winds can be used on an industrial scale. They are so-called airborne wind energy systems. The globally patented SkySails power system consists of five main components. A free-flying power kite on a tether, a launch and recovery system, an automatic control system, and a generator for producing electrical energy in a rotating ground station. For takeoff, the folded power kite is lifted out of storage. It is then positioned to take off height at the launch and landing mast. The inflowing air unfolds the kite to its full size until it is launched. Then a winch is the tether until the kite reaches its operational altitude of 200 to 800 meters. The kite unwinds the tether from the winch that is connected to a power generator. Energy is generated. To increase the pulling force and the system's energy yield, the kite is flown in figures of eight during this so-called power phase. As the tether reaches its maximum extension, the retrieval phase begins. The power kite is flown to a position that creates a low pulling force. The generator now acts as a motor and recoils the tether. This consumes only a fraction of the energy generated in the power phase. The remaining energy surplus feeds into the grid. Cycle deck starts. For landing, the winch retracts the tether completely and the power kite is docked to the launch and landing mast. The power kite is reefed and lowered at the mast, after which it is stowed away. The sky sales power system can be installed onshore, no mobile or fixed installations, and offshore on conventional or floating foundations. In this way, the turbines can also be easily and quickly secured in greater water depths of up to 700 meters using proven mooring technology to help the readily available offshore supply vessels. The SkySails power technology is based on the well-known and worldwide patented SkySails propulsion for ships. It has been tested in tough everyday life on board seagoing vessels and replaces up to two megawatts of propulsion power from the main engine in favorable wind condition with the help of 400 square meters fully automatic cuts. Hmm. Mobile SkySails power systems with an output of up to 200 kilowatts are already available today. Systems with capacities in the megawatt range will be available to order shortly. Oops, sorry. So, anyway, onto the first slide after after this uh, movie. I hope everything was fairly clear from that. I think it, it uh, basically shows you the function of the sky sales technology. The next two slides are very very important for me to try and get across to you, and I hope I can, can get this across to you. Uh, the first slide is to do with full load hours, and I'm, I'm hoping everybody knows what that is, but if they don't, uh, a very short explanation. When looking at the different technologies, if you're looking at fossil fuel power production, full load hours are almost uh, a done deal. You can basically just burn as much fuel as you want, run the capacity at full capacity, 24-7, uh, the whole year round. Uh, the fuel is there, it can be used, and you can produce as many full load hours as you need to. As soon as you start looking at any renewable energy source, uh, it's not that clear anymore. There's only so much sun coming down in the day. Uh, there's no sun at night, obviously. Um, the wind at, at lower altitudes 
is very unstable and you, know, you might be getting up to about i think the average on a worldwide basis is 2000 2100 full load hours for a wind turbine an onshore wind onshore wind turbine solar farms or solar panels especially when you're looking at northern regions you could be looking at three hours a day which which comes up to about a thousand uh, full load hours per year this is a big problem and i'll go into that in a second but as soon as you start looking at the numbers for the sky sales you're looking at six and a half thousand full load hours per year uh, which is probably 70 percent or 75 percent of available full load hours so we're very very high on full load hours and the next graph or the next uh, explanation is base load power again you know a power station fossil fuel uh, a power station can run uh, 24 7 the whole year round at whatever capacity it needs to but the base load is always there so every hour of the day you have power you can flick on the switch you've got it solar and turbine again it's a little bit different today when we're looking at just feeding into a network and somebody says okay we've got a two megawatt plant we've got a five megawatt plant it's it's one percent of the total requirement it ends up being a, a relatively uh, uh, cost-effective way to produce energy uh, the prices are very low at the moment but in the future when we start talking about alaska's renewable goals of 80 percent 80 percent renewables um, how can you supply that with renewable technology that might only be doing anywhere between 10 and 40 percent base load the answer is you have to almost double the capacity of the plant the installed capacity but not only that, because you're only producing for that 40%, you need to distribute it over the 80%, if that makes sense to everybody. Uh, so you need some sort of storage facility. So in the future, we're going to start to see these prices going up and up and up. And this is, again, where Sky Sales comes into its own. Its base load is close to 90%. So for 90% of the year, we are producing energy. Maybe not at full capacity, but we are producing energy for 90% of the year because we're up there at the high altitudes, stronger winds, more continuous winds. Uh, the advantages have basically already been through those. We're two to three times more, more energy efficient than a standard uh, wind turbine technology. We can start in very low winds, three meters per second, which is about nine feet per second a very light breeze we can already get the kites up there and like i say when we get when we are up there in the high altitude winds it's not a problem on in anymore it stays up there so high full load hours compared to any other uh, renewable energy uh, technology it's hurricane typhoon resistant uh, we have experience over 15 years of these kites flying across most of the oceans in the world in some of the harshest weather conditions has significantly lower operating maintenance costs. These systems are fully automated. They're run from a headquarters, whether that be in Germany or Alaska or the US, it's all remotely uh, run. It's easily assembled and disassembled, so it's in very, very quickly. If you're on a truck, you unload it from the truck, you, you get the crane in, load it onto its tripod, which gives it the ability to turn into the wind. And within two to three days of landing there, you're producing energy. So a very fast installed technology. The soft side of things is it's up there at two, two uh, let's say 600 to 1200 feet in the air. You hardly see this thing. Um, it doesn't affect wildlife. It doesn't give you any flickers or shadows or very, very little and virtually no noise. So it's very kind for the environment and it's very, very easily moved, removed, upgraded, or whatever has to be done because it is a containerized system. Just a quick comparison, 15,000 megawatt hours per year. Um, if you look on the left-hand side, we're looking at a seven megawatt wind turbine, which you'll be hard to find one uh, land-based. So you're looking at a seven megawatt wind turbine, 100,000 square meters of solar panels, your traditional gas generator or oil generator and the sky sails. Now, if you just look at some of the figures, I'm not going to read them all off, but 
when you look at turbine technology, these are massive structures. They're 150 meters tall, um, or 150 meters diameter, 200 meters tall from to the tip of the blade. 5,000 tons of concrete, 500 tons of steel, a lot of fiberglass that can't even be recycled. Similar goes for the solar panels. I mean, you've really got dedicated land there. You can't farm, you can't graze cattle, you can't do anything. It's dedicated land. Plus, after 20, 25 years, you have a lot of toxic materials, toxic uh, rare earth metals and materials. With the sky sails, we have roughly two tons of concrete for three small base pads, which are about um, uh, three feet by three feet by 12 inches deep. So very little concrete, very little steel. It's a 30 foot container. And we have 200 kilos or uh, what's that about? Um, 500 pounds of textiles high up in the air that maybe gets replaced once a year. That's basically it. So just to give you a, a slight comparison there, the advantages, as you may notice, you barely notice. I've, I've um, shown you this already, so I'll skip through this one pretty quickly. Um, sorry, I went the wrong way on that. How it all started. We say this is a new technology, it really isn't. This started in the year 2001. Reinhard, my partner, who's all, also on, on the call today, he was the first seed investor in the company Sky Sales, and they developed technology which proved to be 25 more, sorry, 25 times more powerful per square meter compared to a traditional sale. They ended up saving 10 tons of fuel a day, or it's about 2.22 megawatt um, propulsion. And now it's running, I think, with over 200 of the largest cargo ships worldwide, propelling them around the, around the globe. So what have we done? We've taken that technology. Now, instead of pulling a static weight, we're basically pulling on a pulley, which is connected to an axle, which turns a generator. And we're producing electricity, not a million miles away, but it still is a transition from propulsion to power. Again, just a, a, a short summary of what's been going on here since the year 2000, 2001. Uh, that's when Reinhard, my current a partner here funded or first seeded this company uh, all the way up to 2015 that's when we had the first power generation system so we've been up there a few years now producing energy on ground very successfully these figures are also just a little bit behind i think the team now has increased about 140 or 150 people What's important is all that development over the last 15 to 20 years has produced a mass of patents and 20 patent families. So we're way in front of any other sort of airborne type technology, power technology, but um, when it comes to it, we have very well um, uh, uh, served by all these patents. Like I said, I, I went on about already about Reinhard being one of the first investors in the company. The next real step with this game-changing technology is going to be for offshore, is going to be looking at deep sea oceans. Some of the biggest turbines, floating turbines, they're, they're really starting to try and produce now are 14 megawatt. They weigh 10,000 tonnes. They're putting these things miles out into the sea at water depths of about uh, 50, 100, 200 metres. A massive column like that compared to a floating uh, container, there's no real comparison. This is when sky sails will really come into its own because there is just absolutely nothing close to sky sails with regards to efficiency and reliability. What do we do as S SSP? Build, own, operate. Basically, we're leveraging this technology from the sky sails company. Um, and we're offering it at a no risk build, own, operate uh, uh, facility. So, in essence, what we do is we say, okay, we're now establishing pilot plants throughout the world, throughout the globe, whether it's the Middle East, the Caribbean, uh, Europe, or Alaska. We're now putting these pilot projects into operation to really develop 
this as a, as a, as a, as a good referenced technology. We do this with no risk, so we guarantee annual output. We guarantee the operation and maintenance and the supply of the whole system. So everything is taken care of. We just need local partners willing to uh, give us the PPA, the power purchase agreements. Just a few examples here. Here's a good one for, uh, for, um, for Alaska. We'll operate in parallel with existing diesel generators to offset fuel usage by up to 90%. Um, we can quite easily install one of our systems within days, will be operational, maybe not at 100% of what it should be, but we operate very quickly and from day one, we will be reducing fuel consumption. Another example is Unalaska. We, we've just seen, really, when we Google Unalaska, we look at some of the things going on, the discussion about geothermal energy, which is highly expensive and very large scale. We don't really figure how that one's going to work. Um, but then when you look at the need of Unalaska with regards to power generation, we're talking about 36,000 megawatt hours per year. Currently using two and a half million gallons of fuel. We're saying with 11 of our current series production kites, which are basically relatively small, um, we can cut that consumption down drastically and we can get the price, uh, the kilowatt hour price down to somewhere between 15 and 20 US dollar cents per kilowatt hour. So basically saving on Alaska five to nine, somewhere between five and nine million US dollars a year. Same goes with uh, solar facilities. Uh, we picked one out in particular here, a 1.2 megawatt solar energy uh, facility. We figure just on the back of an envelope, where it's, it's probably producing somewhere between one and one and a half uh, a thousand megawatt hours per year. Um, just by putting two of our series kites, the ones that we are, we are now in series production, we can increase that by another six and a half thousand megawatts per year. Not only are we increasing the output, but the base load. Think of it. I mean, these guys, uh, they need the sun. Um, the sun only shines for a few hours a day. Uh, and a sun, you know, when you're looking at full load hours, maybe three hours a day. So for the other 18 or 19 or 20 hours, we are still producing a lot of energy. So they marry up very, very nicely. Here's another example project that we're working on. This is in uh, Antigua. And if you look, uh, we've come up with several models here. This is a five kite system we're looking at here. And if you look at the model here, um, we're looking at the current series production, which goes up to 500 kilowatts. Then the next one, which will be available next year or the early the following year, is a 1.1 megawatt series. And then we go up to 2.2 megawatts. So just to show you one facility with five stations and not expanding even, we're just upgrading those containers. We're going from 15 gigawatt hours a year to 66 gigawatt hours a year. Um, you know, we did the same exercise with eight sky sales power systems and the same again with 12. But if you look at the 12 uh, kite system here, we're already looking at um, taking over a quarter or a third of um, Antigua's power production. So it's, it's notable. Example, Jamaica. Again, here this is. Sorry, uh, but, and I, uh, let me interrupt because yeah. the, I think it's important to understand. Antigua is a little bit like Alaska. They have to transport the fuel, and the fuel comes with high costs. So it's not only about producing energy. We save them money, lots of money. That's 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 that's, that's should be of interest with, with, without any risk, without any uh, of the investment of their own, and only with five to, to 12 points, if, as you see at the map, it's just the cats in the, in the air, you, you, could, you, you just you can see it, you can barely, barely notice it, at, but they are producing and they're saving money every day. Sorry, thanks. sorry, because I just wanted to. Uh, yeah, no, thanks for that, Rana. Yeah. So again, getting back to Jamaica, um, we're looking at a hybrid pilot project for a 42 gigawatt hour um, a facility. You just have to look at the numbers. You know, diesel generators, 35 cents a kilowatt hour gives you a, a total annual cost of almost $15 million. Uh, 
as soon as you start looking at replacing some of that with, with some sky sales kites at 16 US dollar cents, whoops, sorry again, um, the numbers go down, obviously. And we're, we're looking at saving over 6 million a year just by putting uh, 10 standard kites in there. Uh, this was an interesting one. This is a project that's been going on for about five, six, seven years now. Um, it's called, uh, it's by a company, Tanweir, who developed this Dofar Wind project. It's a 50 megawatt uh, project. And just to give you a little bit of a comparison, this is talking about now 13 3.8 megawatt wind turbines. These are, these are damn big things. They're, they're, they're up there. They're producing, or they hope to produce 125 gigawatt hours per year with a maximum of two and a half thousand gigawatt hours production over the course of 20 years. Now this again, I won't go into it. This is massive as masses of steel and concrete. It's noisy, dangerous to wildlife. It kills all sorts of birds and has significant uh, recycling problems and CO2 footprint. Now, we can look at the alternative, which is 21.1 megawatt PN32 sky sails, which should be out next year, late next year. We can produce the same amount of power or slightly more, and we can produce about the same uh, output over a 20 year period. But the beauty again of the sky sail system, because it is containerized and it is sort of, let's call it semi-mobile, we can change them out. So as we come out with a new generations of 2.2 megawatt uh, systems, we can literally just slide them in. Oh, I'm sorry. So at the end of the day, by running on four years with the 1.1 and doing the, the, the last 16 years with the 2.2 megawatt, we're basically doubling the 20 year output of that facility. So it's easily done. This is not a fixed installation with tons of concrete. It's, it's a slide in, slide out, basically. And we're talking about 10 cents a kilowatt hour at the end of the day for a facility like that. Economies of scale, I uh, don't have to explain this to anybody. As soon as we're looking at 330 gigawatt hours, we're going down to eight cents, a thousand gigawatt hours, five. And then as we get larger, we're really getting into the, into the lower cents range. Now, the difference in what we're saying here is we know, uh, and we can discuss this at length if we, if, we, if we want to, the price of standard renewables, of standard turbine technology and solar technology will increase dramatically in the next 5, 10, 15 years. Our technology will not increase, it will decrease. Quite the opposite. So just a couple of examples to, to end up with. Um, offshore platforms in Cook Inlet, currently being provided by onshore power production at very, very high prices. We don't know what the prices are, we just know they're very, very high. Uh, we could easily transform that into a, into a com completely uh, renewable um, power source by either mounting on uh, sky sail systems on the platform itself, which we feel will probably not happen. Um, it's a bit of a complex uh, thing to try and do. Or we get old barges or old ferries or old ships and we house or we place our containers on top of those redundant ships either near one or preferably two or three of these platforms, and we feed all the platforms with renewable energy. So immediate reduction in power cost and related CO2 reduction. Uh, Raven Air, we saw that in the news. Um, they want to purchase 50 electric aircraft, which sounds fantastic, until you figure, well, where do they get their power? So they've got 100 miles range. They've got 30 or so hubs to be going to. They need to tank up. And it can't be from a diesel generator, otherwise it defeats the object. So again, this could be a great marriage between a very mobile sky sail system and the new hubs that are now being proposed to be traveled between uh, with electric power. So we could truly make flying green. So the conclusions and uh, Reinhard, you might want to add a few things here because I'm a bit techy, I'm afraid. Um, we do pose an excellent opportunity or a real way out of the problems as we see it in providing the world with green energy at the levels we're talking about, whether that's 50%, 80% or less, it's a real challenge with current renewable technology. So we think we have an answer, we have a new pool of energy and we know how to get to that energy. 
We have a minimal impact on landscape, environment, precious wildlife, obviously important for a lot of countries. Uh, we have a very, very small um, area of land that needs to be cordoned off. Everything around the kites can be used for, for other uses like crops or, or, or cattle. Again, it's quickly in, it's quickly out. It can be relocated, it can be upgraded very quickly, double the capacity, quadruple the, the capacity over the next years, whatever needs to be done. And the beauty of what we're offering in our BOO model is it all comes at no risk to the off-taker. We guarantee kilowatt hours per year. We guarantee the running of the facility and we operate and maintain it. So thank you all for, for taking part and, and listening to this presentation. Sorry, it was a bit jerky and a bit techy, but um, if anybody has any questions, I don't know how it goes now, uh, Marianne. Um, actually, I'll, I'll uh, help out here. Uh, and uh, Marianne, since we have such a uh, compact group today, I'm, I'm going to invite folks to ask their questions themselves. Um, I, if if uh, you would wait to be called on, but if you want to uh, turn on your cameras and open your mics uh, when called upon, uh, you can uh, pose the questions to, your, to the speakers yourselves. Um, and uh, Marianne, I'll, I'll turn to you for a uh, first question, if you will. Perfect, exciting and very, very interesting presentation. Um, I, I looked at interest with what you were saying about uh, the Cook Inlet and the possibility and uh, the, the use of barges or, you know, old uh, uh, vessels that could be used for a possible solution. Um, the, the onshore seems so much more viable because it seems like you operate best and most efficiently when you're combined with an existing wind farm. For example, we have the existing Fire Island wind farm. We have the existing Willow solar farm. Um, can you talk a little bit about the advantages of kind of redundant and combined renewable resources in a location that's already fully equipped to be taken back to the grid, such as Fire Island Wind, such as Willow. Reinhard, can I ask you to answer that or, or should I try my this best? Is, this is easy explained. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, when Richard talk, talked about it, so let me say it clear, uh, in 10 years time, no one, nowhere in the world will, 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 will build up new, uh, uh, wind turbines. This will be just an old technology which isn't effective anymore. Uh, I know Brian is listening and he told us to don't don't do it this directly, but it, it, there is no way. This is a this is a, a, a really game changing technology. So it makes no sense to use wind turbines anymore. But it's quite the opposite with with with, with solar. When when the sun is shining, it's a great technology. But as Richard mentioned, the sun isn't shining for, for 24 hours, but they have to have the capacity. So they, are all, they already have everything there. We can't, literally, literally spoken, we bring in a kite, takes us two, two, two days, we, we, we connect it to the grid and we start producing much more energy than the, than the, than the, than the, than the, than the winter farm is producing, or at least we produce the energy when the wind farm is not producing without any costs or anything. Uh, we can go deeper in it and talk for, for hours about all the problems we can solve, but uh, Richard mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, the more you use uh, 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 renewable energies, the, the more complicated it gets with the, with the grid. And, and this is also a solution. So we're right now uh, uh, working on a project of a really big, uh, I think it's the second biggest uh, 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 solar farm in the world. It's, it's based in Egypt. And they have uh, this real big problem that the, the wind farm is, uh, the, sorry, the solar farm is, is, is so big that when it doesn't produce, it gives real trouble to the, to the grid. So they pay us, they we are talking about into negotiations, they will take us, at least they will pay us close to six, two, two times the price they get for the electricity produced, just not to, 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 to destroy the net and the grid. That's a funny, funny thing. So we are, we are, we, we bring solutions to problems which, 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 which many politicians are not, not thinking about yet. 
And there are a few other examples. Richard uh, also, also mentioned Oman. It's funny because in, in, in Oman, they were very proud when they signed the, 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 the Paris Agreement, the politicians, they, they get photographed and they, uh, they the publicity and all these all these things. But now they get it. Oh, we have to invest and real lots of investments, but they are used to use the cheapest energy. They have their own, their own oil, their own gas to produce energy. So they have the lowest energy prices in the world. They are not willing to, to, to invest in, in renewables. But on the other hand, they have the, the 2030 goal. So, so they, they, now, now they say, what, what should we do with it? Well, ideally, you start planning and you start planning big size because we're we talking billions to invest if you go with the, with the old technology. And then they said, you are the solution. We say, yes, that's, that's what we are for. So the combination of, 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 of solar and our kites, is the, this, is the, this, is the, this is the conclusion. So uh, solar farms, they're already existing. We can, with, without any problem, it's just two, three, four times uh, uh, to inc increase the product production. That's all. Without, you don't even see the kite. A very high base load, which is very important. Huh? Mm. Yeah. yeah. Aaron, did you have a question? Um, yeah, I just want to know with the wind turbines, they, they kill a lot of birds. Have you guys seen any effects with the kites on birds? Yeah, we have a lot of studies in, in, in Germany, and there, uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a nice movie from the, from the German television where you see a bird following the kite for almost half an hour. And I say, <laughs> so maybe, maybe he's confused or something, but I think by far that's the, that's the only damage. Which is, uh, the kite is in the air for five years, so there is no, no damage. It's, I mean, you, you don't find any, 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 any bird on the ground or something. So we, we have no idea. As I said, there's a study, and it says no damage, but you, you, you you never know. Maybe uh, a bird fly against the kite, but I have, I have no idea. I don't think this makes any harm to it. Nothing like wind turbines and the stories you hear there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we've had uh, quite a bit of, uh, you know, early adoption with wind in Alaska, but then uh, realization about uh, avian um, impacts were pretty severe, especially in migratory bird areas, yeah. subject to international migratory bird law. And it, it, it was a, a detriment. And some of the slower um, rotating uh, turbines have been more successful. But um, wind, wind in general, I, I mean, there are some communities in Western Alaska that have operated exclusively off of wind for a period of time, but not, not for the whole year. And um, so probably got people online who could speak more, more to that. Sean or somebody. It's everywhere in the world. It's just not effective. You, you, mm -hmm. you can talk about it. And they are, they're impressive, but as I said, it's a, it's a, I have no idea. It's a 16 year old, uh, a 6,000 year old technology, and nothing has changed, to be honest. It's still handmade, more or less. <laughs> and, and in the end, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's about money. And as I said, not effective means it costs a lot and doesn't produce many, many lots of energy. So. No, makes no sense. We can, we can really the the kites will will replace the, the, the wind turbines. That's 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 for sure. We see it. We work all over the world, and, and, and people don't. Uh, in the German, uh, I think in everything started in Germany for, for for tax reasons around 30 years ago. The first the first the first uh, in, in really large scale uh, uh, wind turbines all built in Germany. For the last three four years, there's no new wind turbine is built in in, in Germany, and they they are always talking about going going green and then doing everything. No, no one is investment in this old technology any, any, anymore. Okay. Sean, did you have anything you wanted to add to that conversation? Yeah. Uh, thanks a lot for the presentation, guys. This is really fascinating. And it's always great to see such innovation and cool ideas coming forward. I'm always curious to look 20 years ahead in the future and see what the cool innovations are that are kind of like the aha, of course, we should have done that. Uh, why didn't you? So anyway, really need to see this concept. Um, uh, I ended up having tons of questions, but let me ask kind of what probably is the most important to me, which is um, you talk about they're hard to see, which, you know, I immediately think of all the pilots and small planes that fly pretty low. Uh, what, uh, how has that been dealt with in the places that you've launched already? Are they lighted at night or have the, the equivalent of the FAA approved them or how does that work? Yeah, FAA proved in, in Germany and all over Europe. 
but you can you can enlighten them if you want. But the, the, the normal thing is it's just a restricted area for pilots, so it's 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 it's, it's part of of the flight book as I as I may call it. So it's not a, not a, not an issue anymore. So these questions comes comes any time, but I think that there's an international laws, international rules. So we the, the permission we've got the permission. Uh, the, the the video says that the kites are flying between 200 and 400 meters. Uh, in, in, in most areas, they, they fly between 200 and 400, and this is this is most perfectly with the with the with the, with the permissions. So you you are a little bit more effective if you go higher, but this might sometimes uh, uh, be a problem because of, of flight restrictions. So the normal kite operates between 200 and 400 meters. We have a lot of documentation on that, so you know after the presentation maybe we can. Uh, you know, send you some more information on that, but it's it's a well proven system. It's been going on, and uh, like Reinhard said, this is through all the major classifications in Central Europe now. So we can send you information on that. Okay. That's great. What I do, do I have time for a follow up? Yes, go ahead. All right. I was, so you reel it in and out. Can you tell me about the timing of reeling out versus in, and then the energy use in both directions, or the energy use and generation in both directions? Uh, I mean, it varies a lot on depending on location, what what the uh, the wind speeds are and what what the conditions are. But to, uh, as a ballpark figure, you're looking at two anywhere between two and three minutes out in the work phase, and you're looking at maybe twenty seconds retrieval, and you're looking at maybe six percent maximum of the power generated being used for the retrieval of the kite. Does that answer it? So for, for, for single installations, yes. we use a, a, a battery as a buffer. But if, to, if we do have two, two kites, we don't need any, any battery and you get 100% feet into the grid at any time. Yes. The kites also can, can, can interact together. It's also an interesting thing. So, so it's, it's, it, it, it looks like, like it's driven from the wind, but the, this, 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 this small uh, device be, uh, un, under, the, under the kite is the, the really interesting thing. It's a, it's, we call it a pilot because it flies, it flies the, the, the kite. So, so it interacts also with the wind. It gets all the, all, the, all, the, all, the, all the information at any time. It's not that it always flies the same figures. It just it uses the all, almost the, 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 the perfect way to, 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 to get most out of it, which is interesting when you look at it for a longer time. So that this, 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 this pushback phase sometimes looks totally different. Great. Um, Bob, did you have a question? I did, yes. Uh, very interesting presentation. Thank you. Um, I was curious about your business model where uh, there's no investment uh, by the local entities. I gather you your company... Uh, produces the equipment, it uh, cites the, uh, the installations, and then does the operation. Um, does that, uh, you know, because investment dollars are always restricted, does that limit how fast you can deploy this? In other words, if you had a model where local uh, partners could make the investment, uh, you know, could, you could license them, would, could that deploy this faster, uh, given the attractiveness of it? We are, we, are, we are open to, to, to anything. So SSP, so the, 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 the technology is, 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 is done by, 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 by Sky Sales in, in, in Germany. We're acting as a, as a partner. And our idea is to be a, a worldwide producer of, of green energy. So this is why we, we put the kites down based on long-term agreement and we just deliver green energy. But of course, uh, it's limited. So if 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 they have worldwide ten thousand of kites to deliver, so our pockets aren't that deep. So we are we're open to everything. The idea of having a bio model is just to to speed up the technology because it's like it's with any technology. I'm, I'm I'm a venture capitalist for I have no idea thirty years right now. This is how I came into the into the whole game. And there there are lots of technologies and everything looks looks nice. But how many installations are there worldwide? And they said, mm, we started. And they said, okay, then call me again in two years' time if it works. And so we decided to put the, the, the money where our mouth is and do it on our own. So for, of course we are limited, but we have a, <laughs> there's a few partners. I, I, I mentioned Oman. And the, uh, to give you a better background, so when I say I'm a I'm, I'm, I'm venture capitalist, so 
what I was really inter was interested for the last 20 years or th almost 30 years, I'm an oil man, like some of, of you, I think. So, so I was deeply into technologies to, to find oil and, and other things. So I'm still an oil man. So green energy, uh, the, the, the world changes right now. So this is why we use it that way. But, but my, 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 my deepest contacts are in the, in the Arab world. And, and this is also how we started with the, with the, with the kites. And we, it just started by accident with Richard and me. So, uh, we speaking openly, we were talking about, uh, about, about the big project in Oman uh, uh, with, 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 with abundant oil wells and we have a technology where we can see, does it make sense to reopen them? But the people only talked about our kites. They weren't interested at all. It took us almost a year to get to to get the minister, the energy minister, to talk to us. And, but then for, for two hours, he only talked about the kites because our partner told, told, told him about our kite. And so we saw that the world is really changing. Also the oil business is changing and they are interested in the stuff. And this is also, to be honest, where we, where we get our, our, our money from. We have, we have partners which we showed them this thing and that we want to be in it because having these kites is like having oil wells, but not limited to the small country of Bahrain. It's all over the world. And this is, this is the, the, the vision behind why we, why we we can do this BO model. Great. Thank you, Bernie. Uh, uh, yes, it is a very interesting uh, concept, and I'm surprised that it's been used for so long. So uh, the question is, how many of these uh, uh, operations do you have uh, ongoing right now that are producing uh, uh, megawatts? And do you have any of them in the United States? No, yeah, I think this is the first presentation we ever did in the in the, in the United States. We, we spoke to to a few potential partners, but we targeted Alaska as the as the perfect example. Starting with this idea of of you have all this 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 this, this relatively small communities powered by by, by by diesel generators, and mm -hmm. as I said, immediately we just put the kite on and save at least half the half the costs. So this is how we started to talk in Alaska. And speaking of of of, of installations, we have installations. In Germany, Germany, and we we are right now waiting that the, 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 the first generation of, of, of kites, the serial production of the kites, is finished. Then we have around four or five uh, 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 projects with where we then deliver the, the, the kites. But it's a really new technology. So the, the permission of the of the of the of the kites in Germany were done at the end of December 2019. And after after we did, did, did uh, all, we were very happy, and then COVID came. So this is the this is the this is the explanation. So some of them are now waiting to get the kites, are eager waiting. But COVID is not only that we can't travel. Uh, the funny thing is also also transport things is a little is is, is much more complicated right now. So the, the, get, getting things shipped shipped and other things takes takes much longer. So at the end of the year, if you're lucky, we have around 30, 40 kites in uh, producing energy. But it all depends on do we get them on the on the on the ground. Maybe you want to mention as well. It's the Google technology. So the thing is, we, we, the, 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 the kites that produce the energy in Germany. They work everywhere in the world. It's the same wind, so it's a, It's not that you say, yeah, but maybe you don't have that 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 that, that many uh, 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 kites on the ground. Maybe it doesn't work. It works. And as I said, the ship thing is the interesting thing. So two hundred out of the biggest four hundred ships in the world use the use the kites as a as a as a, as a, as a propulsion to to to, to save uh, uh, the fuel. And this 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 works in any condition. Great. Follow up. Uh... Uh, if you were able to get some uh, contracts here in Alaska, how long would it take you to mobile up and build your little containers and your kites? In other words, is it, is it a, a six month project to get this, uh, this operation moving? Or, or you, do you have a time frame on how, how it will be, uh, how long it will take to uh, produce it and put it in place? We, we, we already started producing more kites than we have, than we have signed uh, contracts right now. So still, it's, I would say within six, within six months, between 20 and 100 kites, if you say you get the agreement, then you have it on the ground. If it's more, then I have to talk to the, to the guys of Sky Sales. <laughs> but I know them well. So. Thank you. The, the, the thing is, it, it's, as I said, 
it's not only a new technology to speak openly, also sky sales right now is, is manufacturing the sky. So when we talk about the next generations, it's all of it. It's really the next big thing. So, so Sky Sales itself is talking to the biggest venture capitalists in the world. So it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a nice company. It's, it's successful for 20 years, but this is a totally different market. It's, a, it's, it's, it's so huge. So we're talking about industrialization. The next generation has to be fabricated really like, like automatized in a, in, 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 a, in a big factory and all the other things. So there are lots of things to say, to change. but for us to deliver the kites on the ground is always a thing of six, of six months and compared to when you talk of, of, of wind turbine projects, you speak always in years. So we, we always, we, we can deliver very quickly. And if it's the small kite, as Richard mentioned, then we upgrade it after a, a couple of months to the, and then it's more powerful. But the, 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 the normal one with 500 kilowatts is also, it looks like 500 kilowatts doesn't sound that much, but they always have to have in mind for six and a half thousand hours. So it's like a 1.5 megawatt turbine, which is the still these turbines are the, are the normally used ones worldwide. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I'm going to make one last call. Anybody else have any questions? Go ahead, Sean. Yeah, so I probably should have introduced myself at the beginning. I'm with Chigach Electric, which is the largest electric utility in Alaska, serving the Anchorage and surrounding areas. Uh, we're really interested in adding more renewables, but we also have to do it in a way that doesn't increase cost. So I heard some of your cost information. Um, do you ever think that a kite could compete with like five to six cent power? Um, which is our avoided cost at this yeah, point. This, this depends on, the, on, on, on how much energy we produce. So I would say the, the first start, uh, we, we, we don't know that your numbers exactly, but I can do the calculation of how much it costs to transport fuel to very far uh, areas and other things. So I think you have lots of areas where you have to subsidize the price because you go it goes up to 30, 40 uh, US dollar cents and you produce CO2. So, if it produced there for 15 US dollar cents, 80% of the amount, you still save a lot of money. Uh, when you say think about going down to four, five, six cents, then we talk about uh, up 50, 100 megawatts of, of, of capacity. Then we can, we can have these this, this prices. And how far do they have to be spaced apart? Uh, 400 meters each to, to each other. Okay. To get the full efficiency. 1,000 feet, 1,200 feet, something like that. Yeah, so get full efficiency, yeah. Hmm. Great. Well, thanks again for the presentation and questions or answers. <laughs> thanks a lot for spending your time. Uh, All right. Well, um, Marianne, I'll turn back to you for any closing comments. Yeah, no, absolutely. Incredibly uh, interesting presentation, very different from those presentations that we have seen in the past. And um, I, I almost wish that we had a little more time to absorb it because then I know we'd have some follow-up questions. So uh, Reinhold and uh, um, uh, Richard, I hope you don't mind if we invite you back at some point going forward because I think you have such an interesting presentation. And I think it caught all of us uh, a little bit by surprise because it truly is new technology. Um, I, I had one quick follow-up. Reinhold, you, you semi-answered my question, but you didn't. My question was very simple in that, isn't it true that the application of the kite sail technology can be integrated with yes, yes, absolutely. Sorry if it wasn't clear enough. Yeah, so yeah. I've heard okay. Austrian before, so it said that Austrian can anything, but not foreign languages. Right. <laughs> no, no, no. Because, because you know, I heard you say, "Oh, it's much better than wind technology," and no, no. I get that. I get Just that. Just it is 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 a very good idea. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right. So, well, thank you all so very much, and uh, we will uh, be inviting you back in the early fall. And I know we'll have a much you know, larger group, but I'm sure this, this video is gonna go viral once people realize how, how different the concept truly is. Thank you so very much. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you very much. Anytime, yeah. or whenever you, you want us to present, do the presentation, we are, we are, we are here. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Thanks a lot. Yeah, thanks Thank everybody. Much, everyone.